Exactly. Uh, Mr. Santosh Shamal, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, great. All right, we're, we're set. Now, now let's get started. Um, without any further ado, uh, uh, we have with us the Secretary General's Special Representative for West Africa and the Sahel, Leonardo Santos Shamal, who is talking to you from Accra, Ghana. Mr. Santos Shamal, uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, let me reiterate our condemnation of the seizure of power by force in Niger. The unfolding crisis, if not addressed, will exacerbate the deteriorating uh, security situation in the region. It will also negatively impact the development and lives of the populations in a country where 4.3 million people need humanitarian assistance. Niger and the region do not need coups d'etat. Population deserve to enjoy peace, democratic governance, and prosperity. Heads of state of the region gathered in Abuja last Sunday for the ECOWAS Extraordinary Summit on the situation in Niger and have taken decisive action commensurate with the gravity of, of the situation. We remain engaged to support ECOWAS efforts towards restoring a constitutional order and consolidating democratic gains in Niger. Thank you. This is my opening uh, remarks. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. We'll now turn the floor over to questions. Uh, first off, from Edith Lederer of the Associated Press. Um, thank you, Mr. Santos Um On behalf of the United Nations Correspondents Association for doing this briefing, um, it's a subject we're all interested in. Um, my question is, um, the military leaders of Mali and Burkina Faso have said that the deployment of any foreign forces from ECOWAS or elsewhere would be considered an act of war and they would join the Niger coup leaders uh, to help fight. Um, you were in Nigeria for the ECOWAS meeting do you expect ECOWAS to go ahead with the deployment of troops in light of this? Have you still been having any new discussions on what might come next in efforts to restore President Bazoum to power? Uh, uh, the uh, summit to give one week to uh, the military junta to hand a back power to President Bazoum. Uh, if this doesn't happen with, uh, after that week, then other options are on the making, including military intervention, including use of force, that's what they said. That period, in my view, is try to give time for a peaceful settlement to take place. So there have been efforts underway. Yeah, you may uh, uh, recall that uh, they asked the uh, president of uh, um, Chad to go to uh, Niamey to uh, meet some of the key personalities involved on these matters. So, and I believe that other efforts also are underway. So I hope that uh, uh, the use of force uh, eventually will not be necessary. Is the UN involved in any of these new efforts to peacefully resolve this situation? We are supporting uh, COAS uh, because our role is precisely that, and not be aware, but we are not engaged on uh, uh, any negotiations so far but we are fully supporting the all efforts to restore uh, demo, uh, democratic order in that country. 
Thanks. Uh, Ibtisam Azam. Hi, my name is Ibtisam Azam, Al Arab Al Jadid newspaper. I have a follow up. Uh, when you say you're supporting uh, all efforts, does this also include the statements you um, referred to by OCASOC? Uh, which says, uh, which talks about, the, which includes the use of force in case the um, the military does not uh, reinstate uh, the elected president. And um, if I am just to to um, to clarify, so from the UN, from your office, you are not in any direct contact with the uh, military, with the coup um, people, and. Uh, D when was the last time you were in contact with the President Mohammed Bazoum? Thank you. Uh, well, a, a few weeks ago, I visited uh, um, near May. It was uh, well before the coup. Uh, this time around, when uh, the coup started, uh, I tried to contact him without much success, but I sent him a message of solidarity. Uh, so uh, now the decision of uh, use force, if necessary, it's it's not a UN uh, uh, decision. It's a uh, uh, Equus decision. But what we 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 we, we value and we support more is that uh, all means uh, to find a, a peaceful solution for 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 the problem should be uh, used. But I recognize also that uh, ECOWAS has the right to take other measures if they feel fit. Um, ju just to clarify, sorry, just a follow up. So d d does that mean, um, I mean, it's clear for me that it's uh, ECOWAS uh, decision to, or um, for the, the, the issue of the use of force, but does the UN support that or not? Or do you believe in such case you would need, they would need um, a Security Council resolution? No, the, the UN only can act with, with the UN mandate. Without that mandate, uh, uh, UN doesn't have the mandate to, to intervene. That's why I was saying that the eventual use of force is a, 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 um, a sub-regional decision by ECOWAS. Okay, Celia de Laveren. Celia de Laveren, Africa Confidential. Uh, you talked about giving the Genta one week. Do you think it's realistic? And uh, do you think also uh, it's, what is the word, realistic too, to impose sanction on a country which is the uh, poorest country in Africa? Well, uh, uh, Mali, uh, sorry, uh, 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 Niger uh, is a member of a, a regional organization. So when you do so, yeah, that means that you, you accept to abide your uh, political uh, behavior in line with the principles of that organization. On the other hand, yeah, you know by being a member what is going to it might happen to you if you don't uh, uh, follow, uh, if, if you violate the rules governing the organization of, uh, of which you are uh, Part of, and therefore, uh, to say that one week, one week can be more than enough, if everybody talks in good faith to find a, a, a workable solution. If everybody wants to avoid a bloodshed. About the sanction, please. But uh, uh, the sanctions were, are now uh, uh, have been imposed uh, with immediate effect. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, underway, but even uh, equals, equals as far as I understand, it's not for use of of force. It's for negotiating settlement of the uh, of the situation. That's why they dispatched the president of uh, of uh, Chad and the other uh, envoys try to find a, a solution. But what do they say is that they are going to use other uh, use force if this uh, peaceful means fail. Murad Al Jazeera. Thank you. Uh, from the statement that issued by the Security Council on the issue, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem that 
the Security Council is willing to take actions. It supports ECOWAS, but it doesn't seem that the, the Security Council itself ready or willing to take actions. Do you think there is a need for the Security Council to take actions on this issue? Well, I don't speak on behalf of the uh, Security Council. I don't have a mandate for that. Uh, what I can say is that uh, the Security Council uh, is issue a communique condemning the, 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 the coup. So this can be a first stage before eventually taking other measures if needed. But uh, also, it was clear by the communique of the Security Council that uh, the organ is supporting the initiatives uh, led by ECOWAS. Okay, Margaret Bashir. Hi, it's Margaret Bashir from Voice of America. Um, could you tell us, have you spoken with anyone in the military, any of the mutineers, and have they given you any signal whatsoever that this could be reversible? And could you also just tell us where you're speaking to us from today? Well, I, I didn't talk to any uh, of the military involved on that. As I said, we are supporting yeah, what uh, uh, the whole process is conducted by ECOWAS. And this will be the line we, we accepted. So we are going to continue along this uh, 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 this path to support the, uh, re, uh, the, 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 the regional organization. And, and, and by the way, he's speaking from Accra, from Ghana. From Ghana. And, uh, and have you had uh, any uh, sign that this could be reversible? Well, it's difficult because the situation is very fluid. What I know is that uh, it, uh, different member states are preparing themselves to use force if necessary. But as I said, uh, the situation is, is fluid, but there are these uh, 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 efforts of uh, find a peaceful solution for the problem. Everybody is giving, giving uh, uh, pr um, priority to these uh, efforts. Uh, Michelle Nichols. Thank you, Michelle Nichols from Reuters. Um, how concerned are you that this could deteriorate, deteriorate into a regional conflict and how quickly that could happen? Well, my concern is that uh, if uh, uh, measures are not taken uh, uh, or this race is not reversed, it's very likely that the spread of terrorism in the region can increase. Uh, so uh, the concern is there, not only my concern, but also the concern of the region. But uh, uh, no one wants to see regional conflict ha happening. But on the other hand, uh, according to what I understood during the summit, not only on this summit, but also in the uh, 7 uh, July summit, which took place in Bissau, the region decided to be intolerant to illegal seizures of power. Okay. Abdul Hamid Sayam. Thank you, Abdul Hamid Sayam from the Arabic Daily Al Quds Al Arabi. Sir, since the end of the Cold War, there at least had been 82 coup, military coups in Africa. Many of them were able to establish themselves and oust the previous government, being elected or not elected. Recently, there was a coup in Mali, in Burkina Faso, in many countries. In Egypt, 2013, a bloody coup. Yet the world were able to tolerate and accept this military coup. Why this is an exception? Why do you think this military coup is an exception and the African Union, ECOWAS, the UN will never, will not tolerate this uh, military coup. Thank you. Well, ECOWAS has a, 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 a protocol on governance on them, which uh, uh, members said have to abide uh, uh, by. Uh, the last ordinary summit in Bissau the decision was that uh, was twofold. One, that, well, uh, uh, the region, ECOWAS, has to assist those countries in transition, namely Mali, Guinea, and Burkina Faso, 
to complete the process of transition through elections. Second, not accept coup d'etat anymore. So it is in line with the second part of the decision that the heads of state and uh, of the region are taking this uh, 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 action, which is different from what they did in the past. Because they understood that, well, this pattern of having a coup d'etat than having a, a negotiation two years uh, 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 also uh, transition has to stop. As in order to discourage a similar situation to happen in the, in the future. Because we have to take into account that until a few years ago, uh, all uh, West African Sahel were seen as the uh, model of uh, stability and democratic rule. And that, uh, that uh, image has to be restored. Linda Fasula. Um, Linda Fasula, NPR at the UN. My question is about uh, potential negotiations. I believe uh, you said that you know the po possible threat of the use of force by ECOWAS would only occur after, uh, unless there are uh, peace discussions fail or something to that effect. That there have to be some peace talks. So, uh, how much time? I mean, is there any indication, number one, that the coup leaders will will participate at all or might participate just to delay um, the possible use of force? Well, I, I cannot go further than uh, uh, it does because uh, we are an external uh, organization to ECO, different institution. Uh, I'm talking based on what I could gather in, in the summit. And what I did was that uh, uh, first they gave a week the whole process uh, to happen. Therefore, to find to that a uh, um, uh, peaceful solution be found. After which, then they will take other measures. That's what I can I can say. Christian uh, Salome. I wonder, Kristen Salumi from Al Jazeera, um, could you put into perspective for us the importance of Niger for UN operations in the region, especially given in Mali the peacekeeping force there is coming to an end? Um, we were told that there's over 1,000 UN employees in Niger, some 300 international and so on. What kind of work is being done there and what is at risk um, as instability increases in the region? Thank you. Well, so far, uh, our colleagues in, uh, in uh, Niger continue to provide to run th their programs. There is no sign uh, uh, that this can happen. In uh, uh, Mali, it's a different story because given the uh, withdrawal of uh, Nozma, we have to make sure that they can operate in security. If, they, and, uh, if there is no security, uh, obviously they cannot operate. So programs will have to be suspended if there is no guarantee of uh, security for them to operate. Nabil Abisab. Thank you, Nabil Abisab, Al Arabi TV station. Um, uh, have you had any discussions in the last two days with uh, authorities in uh, Mali and Burkina Faso? Uh, we saw that they uh, both uh, considered that any intervention in Niger would be considered uh, as a declaration of war. Uh, also, can you share with us your understanding to uh, What's happening in the region with, with military uh, leaders? Because we see that this is not the first coup in the region. And um, it seems that there are some um, uh, shared uh, uh, maybe atmosphere or uh, aspirations uh, in the military authorities to, uh, uh, to take power. Or if you can share, us, uh, share with us your thoughts about that. Thank you. Well, on the statement uh, in Mali and uh, Burkina, uh, I don't have any comment to make uh, 
at this time. What I can tell you is that uh, tomorrow I will be flying to Bamako. So I will have interaction with the authorities and maybe these matters can be raised. But for as for now, uh, uh, I cannot make any comment. Uh, concerning the uh, situation, uh, general situation in the region, why the military that comes by waves. You, this used to be a pattern until 20, 30 years ago. Now it's coming back. But some of the initial, initial analysis, preliminary analysis, this associates also with the deficits of uh, governance in some time. Some, but also on the uh, maybe contagion effects when things happen, one country might happen with country. But uh, I want to be cautious, uh, cautious with that because these are just preliminary things. There are no firm studies, as far as I know, on because each country is different. Yeah, so, but this is a phenomenon we have to look at. What is clear is that uh, uh, the ECOWAS wants this to come to a stop. Okay, Dulcie Lineback. Uh, thanks very much. I, I wanted to uh, find out when exactly this week-long uh, uh, negotiation is, is begins. Is it today, as of today? And also, you mentioned that some countries in ECOWAS would be willing to intervene militarily. Uh, which countries are they, and do they include Chad? Thanks. Well, uh, about the, when we started, the, 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 the summit took place uh, last Sunday. So uh, the end of the the, 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 the the time frame given is next Sunday. So and on countries, I didn't say that there are some countries which were said the organization side uh, is willing to intervene militarily, but not singling out individual countries, but the organization itself. Uh, okay, if I may follow up. So which countries in the organization have expressed interest in intervening militarily? Thanks. Well, they discussed the, uh, the situation. They approved the communique. This is uh, 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 what uh, I, I can say, but not individual countries. Okay, Joe Klein. Uh, I, I, it will not be appropriate for me to say this country said that, that country said that. No, this will not be appropriate for me. To. Yeah, uh, Joe Klein of Canada Free Press. At the summit meeting that you mentioned, the ECOWAS summit meeting, um, and in the context of discussing possible military intervention, uh, did the um, subject of the of mercenaries and particularly the Wagner group come up because uh, the Wagner group is increasing uh, uh, its involvement in a number of the Sahel countries and I believe has some presence um, in Niger. Yeah, that was not... What? Yeah, yeah, please, please, whoever else has their microphone on, please shut it down. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, so, uh, okay now, uh, uh, Mr. Shantashama, can you repeat what you were saying? Sorry, someone else had a microphone on. Yep. Over to you. That the other Wagner group was not discussed in the summit. Okay, uh, and then last question. I know, I know you have to head out, so uh, Evelyn, uh, over to you. Thank you for having me. Uh, Evelyn Leopold, Globetrotter Media. Um, looking at the long range problems in the Sahel, it seems that they get military help from all sorts of countries when they need it. They get humanitarian help from the United Nations and from other NGOs, which is fine, but it's a Band-Aid. And uh, is there any thought given to having real economic help, such as schools to educate all the young people so they don't all drift to Europe and become migrants, and, and other programs that even a military would agree to if it would? I'm just wondering if this is something the UN had planned or thought about and so forth. Well, the UN approach is to have a, a, a humanitarian development and security 
interventions so all co combined. Because without uh, 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 security, there is no uh, 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 sustainable development. You build something today, tomorrow is going to be destroyed. But uh, at the same time, it's important to, to provide short-term uh, 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 relief to the populations in need. You have a displacement of populations. Uh, the number of refugees is increasing uh, uh, in, in the region. So all these uh, uh, three axes have to be uh, 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 dealt with uh, almost simultaneously. But uh, security, to, to, to bring security, is uh, paramount. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks very much, uh, and, and, and uh, I'd like once again to thank our guest, uh, the Special Representative for uh, West Africa and the Sahel, Leonardo santos Th Thanks very much for your time, and I wish you uh, safe travels to Bamako. Thank you. Thank you very much. Man. Thanks. Thank you. And, uh, and uh, wait just a few more minutes, and you will have uh, uh, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, the U.S. Ambassador.